End of this video, you'll have your own fully fine-tuned model using OpenAI's API. I'm going to show you how in seven steps. First, you got to ask yourself, should I do fine-tuning? Only if prompts aren't working for you or if your prompts are really long. Ideally, fine-tuning is a second resort. When does fine-tuning work? It can work reasonably well if you want to get the model to write in a certain style or tone, or if you want the model to give structured answers, for example, an array with a name and an address. Where it won't work well is for memorizing data. There, it's better to try again and put the information in a prompt or to use a vector embedding database, which I'll hope to cover in another video. So here's what you're gonna to need to fine tune. You'll need a CSV file with at least one column of data to train on. And second of all, you'll need an open API key. I'll put the instructions below from OpenAI that you can follow along by yourself, or I've provided a script and guidance for purpose that will help you to automate preparing these prompts and running analysis on your fine tuning. Let's get started. The first step is to prepare a CSV file. Here I've got a CSV with one column and in each row I have the content of one of my blogs. You need to have at least 10 examples. I recommend having at least 15 because you want to split at least some off for a training set. Ideally you have about 100. Now as you can see I just have one column here. I'm going to open this up, train.csv, just so you can inspect it. I recommend doing this just to check that all of the data is correct. Here you can see the content of one of the blogs. The next step is adding a second column for the prompt. Now, you may already have a second column for the prompt if you have a question answer style data set. The question will be the prompt column and the answer will be the completion column. But if you have data like what I have, where it's just a blog or it's a tweet, then you won't have a question that leads to that blog or tweet as an answer. But you can use a little trick called Rewinder and you can ask an LLM to generate a prompt that would provide a completion of that type. Let's try that out. Here I am in Visual Studio and I have again train.csv and I'm going to run python rewinder.py. Take a quick look at that script. Essentially the script will send each of the rows, each of my blogs to OpenAI and ask it what would be the question that would lead to a blog of that type. Respond immediately and only with a brief prompt that would be appropriate for generating the following content. I've allowed that to run for just about a minute and now we can open up again train.csv and we'll see here that now in addition to the completion column there's a prompt. For example, discuss the potential impact of China's rise in innovation and the changing landscape of global R&D and the answer then will be my blog. Our next step is to prepare the messages in a format to send to OpenAI API. To do that, we're going to run another short script, Python prepare messages.py. The script is going to take the CSV file and convert it into a format for OpenAI. It's going to ask me to provide a system message. I recommend putting in a system message just because it'll help during inference, although you will need to include the system message also when you're operating with this fine-tuned model. I'm going to say for the system message, you are Ronan McGovern, write a blog on the following topic. Do you wish to split out a test data set? This is going to take 20% of the training set and use it as a test set to evaluate the performance of the fine-tuning. So I'm going to say yes. Now all of the messages are structured. I have a system message, I have a user message, which is the prompt, and then I have the assistant message, which is my blog. You can see that the very same format is used here for the test data set. Right before we submit to OpenAI, let's check everything is in order so we don't run into any bugs. Again, I'm looking at train.csv and I'm going to run Python validate.py. This is going to look through both the test and the training data set. It's going to check uh, for errors. Uh, it'll show you the distribution. So it looks like uh, it'll give us data on 
the number of, um, of tokens in each. It's also going to estimate the cost. So it's saying that uh, for the training data set here, there's 22,000 tokens and I'll be charged for four epochs. So it's going to tune four times with that data, which is 88,000 tokens. And at the prevailing cost of fine tuning, that's going to be about 70 cents as a very rough estimate. Now that we've passed validation, we're going to try fine tuning. Let's get started. I'm going to run Python fine tune dot py. This will give me a selection of options. And the first one is what I want, which is to create a fine tuning job. This automatically is going to upload train JSON and then upload test JSON. And once they're uploaded, it's going to start off a fine tuning job on OpenAI. Okay, the script will automatically wait if it's not ready to submit. Uh, it will keep on retrying every 10 seconds. And here you can see our job has been submitted. There's going to be four epochs of training. Uh, as I previously, previously said, it's going to be training the GPT 3.5 turbo model. Uh, if you wish, you can rerun that fine tune script and we can retrieve um, a list of fine tuning jobs. I'm going to show 10 jobs. And I'll just scroll up to the top to find the latest one. So here we have this fine tuning job. And you can see the status of this is running. It's going to take um, anywhere between a few minutes to even it could be an hour, depending on if there's a lot of backup at OpenAI for fine tuning the model. Once your fine tuning job is done, you'll get an email from OpenAI and you'll start the visualization. Here's what the email looks like. You'll see here the fine tuning job number and also the model number. So I'm just going to grab uh, the fine tuning job number here, copy paste. Back over in the terminal, we can again run Python fine tune.py. This time selecting download and save a result file. So it's asking here for the file ID to download. Now I don't have that file ID, so I'm going to press control C to exit. Run fine tune again. I'm going to do number three, retrieve the state of a fine tuning job and put in that fine tuning job number I got from the email. Sorry, I'll have to do that again. Number three and put in the fine tuning job number. That will give me the result file. So I've got the result file from this uh, fine tune. And now I can run again, Python fine tune. This time, download and save result file. And I'm going to enter the result file ID. And that has now created uh, a result file that is present right here. The next step is to graph those results. Simply, I'll run python graph.py. And I want to enter in the result file again. And here we have a graph of the training and the validation loss. So in blue, you can see the training loss. The slope of that is the green line. So you can see that we are uh, reducing the training loss. And then the validation loss is in orange. And that is also improving, but at a much slower rate. Now, what you're looking for here, ideally, is that you would like the validation loss um, to be going down. And ideally, you wouldn't like the training loss to be going down a lot faster than validation. So I think this shows you, and by the way, this is with my full set of blogs. I've done a data set of over 200 blogs in this case to get some more significance. But it highlights how fine tuning is really quite difficult. You can see some uh, improvement in the model, perhaps representative of capturing my personal style. But obviously, the content in different blogs is going to be different. And so it's going to be hard. Uh, to train, say, on the topic of Korea, if it's only seen data with respect to my views on maybe Ireland and Russia. For the very last and possibly most important step, let's try out manual inspection of the data. For this, again, we have a script uh, that we can run. And the script is going to do a few things. Let's just run it first with Python eval results.py. I need to try that again. 
Python evaluate.py. And I need to enter the fine tuned model ID. So I'm going to copy that over from here in the email. And here's what the evaluation script is doing. It's grabbing a random row or a random system prompt and user prompt from my test data set. And it's sending that to OpenAI to get a response. It's getting a response from GPT Turbo without fine tuning. Then it's getting a response with fine tuning, the fine tuned model response. And lastly, it's showing the correct response, which is the actual response. So basically you should be able to see what the raw GPT would do, whether the fine tuning is having any effect whether it's making it sound a little bit more like what I am in this case. You should be using the quality of the fine-tuned model response to determine whether your fine-tuning has worked or not. If it doesn't work very well, you might try adding more data points if possible, or maybe making more effort to clean up your data set so that it's tidy. Or you might find that it makes more sense to go back to simply prompting the model. That's it for the OpenAI fine-tuning crash course. I've put the links below to the OpenAI API documentation. I've also put a link to purchase access to the repo that will run all of these scripts. Let me know any questions on this in the comments. Cheers.